As we head deeper into the fall, we're seeing coronavirus cases going up and up and up across much of central New York. So let's bring in our expert on COVID-19. You know him, Dr. Stephen Thomas from SUNY Upstate Medical. Dr. Thomas, thanks for being with us as always. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, I know you and I talk a lot about the Onondaga County numbers, and those are definitely up. But Cayuga has the most active cases at any point in their pandemic. Talked to their public health director about it yesterday. Cortland up. So how concerning is this as a region and why? Oh, I think whenever we see uh, an increase in the number of, uh, of new cases, is on a daily basis that is concerning because again remember you know we talk about this reproductive number and the average number of people that an infected person can infect and you know for SARS-CoV-2 that number is anywhere between two and four so mm. every new case that we see there is the potential that two to four additional people could be infected by that by that person. Um, so it's concerning for that. It's also concerning because, again, you know, the healthcare system in the United States operates on a daily basis at around a 90 plus percent uh, capacity. And so uh, any number of new cases could, uh, you know, be a tipping point for us uh, outstretching what our healthcare capacity is um, and, and the ability for us to properly take care of patients, both those with COVID and without COVID. So those are, those are two reasons why these numbers are concerning. Um, you know, people talk a lot about we're in this inevitable fall wave with the cases going up, but really does it have to be inevitable? I mean, we know how to keep the virus down, right? No, I, that's a very good point. It does it does not have to be inevitable and it is within our power to uh, uh, to try and again, bend the curve, flatten the curve. You remember we used to talk about that all the time and we haven't heard too much about it uh, uh, recently. And, and the good news is for Central New York, we've already done this once and so staying home uh, from work or school if you're sick, washing your hands frequently, um, wearing a mask when you can't physically distance, uh, physically distance um, you know, when you can, and if you do get ill, to talk to a medical provider uh, and get tested and to quarantine yourself until you can get tested and quarantine yourself until you can get the result. Um, those are the things that could, uh, you know, could flatten uh, this curve that we've started to see uh, an uptick of in the last uh, last couple of weeks in, in central New York. So, it we we can have uh, a fall and a winter like we had this summer um, if we, you know. Re reinvigorate, uh, reinvigorate ourselves and pursue these public health interventions. Uh, great uh, advice as always. Here's one thing that people are very likely going to go out to do, and you, you'd have to say it's a good thing for them to do. Vote. They're going to get out and vote. Early voting starts in New York State on Saturday. So how safe is it to go to the polls, and how can we uh, make it as safe as possible when we go there? Yeah, so I think the first thing that you need to do is you need to kind of look in the mirror and say, am I somebody who is at high risk of a bad outcome if I get infected? So if you're over, you know, 60, 65 years of age, if you have uh, other medical problems, uh, obesity, diabetes, heart or lung disease, uh, I would seriously consider uh, putting in an absentee ballot um, if, if I, you know, if I was in that category. If you're someone who is you know, not in that group and you're young and, and healthy, um, then yes, I believe that you can vote. I believe it's important that you vote and you can vote in person. So the things to do would be, again, uh, if you're sick, don't go vote, <laughs> do an absentee mm -hmm. ballot, um, wear a mask, uh, make sure that you wash your hands before you go in uh, and after immediately after you vote. Uh, and make sure, and I'm, uh, I know that a lot of polling places are going to have this, make sure that you can maintain physical distance um, whenever possible with, while you're in the actual act of uh, voting. So when you're in the queue waiting to register or when you're in the queue waiting to, uh, you know, to get your ballot and go, and go figure it out. So, so two things. One, should I be someone who's voting in person? And that's your own, you know, you got to uh, establish what your own uh, comfort level is with your physical, um, uh, you know, your medical issues. And then two, uh, those public health interventions that I just mentioned. Last quick one for you. Movie theaters opening back up some as early as Friday. Is that safe? I know there's a lot of restrictions on them, but it, can you do it safely? You know, I think of it the same as uh, voting and I think of it the same as going to restaurants. There is a certain group of people like the group that I just mentioned, older people and people with medical problems who really should not be going into these uh, settings. It's, it's just a risk that I don't think folks um, uh, should take. Um, but again, you know, these movie theaters are going to have to comply with 
um, uh, you know, the infection prevention measures that have been set out for them. And so there's obviously going to be uh, a, a much less capacity than they're, nor than they're, than they're used to. There's going to have to be a lot of distance in between people. There's going to have to be folks wearing masks until they're, uh, you know, in their seat. Um, so, you know, can it, can it be done? Uh, I think it can be done. Is it going to be easy or the same movie experience that you're used to? Uh, it, it will not. Dr. Stephen Thomas, of course, we're out of time and I still have more questions. So, you know, we'll have you back again to, to try to get to those next ones. But appreciate your time as always tonight. Thank you. Thank you.